know this shit can get better. Working hard, trying to pull myself together. And uh, the YouTube's man, you've been going crazy. Yeah, man. You know, hey, man, I got to got to keep on going for the city, man. I'm yeah, trying to yeah. see the bigger I get, shit, the bigger everybody get, cause I'm the type of motherfucker, bro. I'm gonna put a nigga up there, bro. I'm gonna give a motherfucker a chance, bro. I don't get no fuck. I'll be on the same shit, bro. I'll be on the yeah. same shit. Yeah. yeah, straight real nigga vibes, man. You know what I'm saying? I seen how you, you know what I'm saying when you when you hit me, you or when you follow me or whatever. I was like, shit. I, I looked into your shit. I was like, damn, this nigga's a legend. What the hell? Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know about this guy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like, yeah, we're going to get man. into that, we're going to get into that, man, because uh, from, from your track record, man, from what I'm saying about you, man, you ain't no small, you ain't no small fish, man. You know, you I a know, fish. Man. Yeah, no, nah, I've been yeah. working hard, man. I just be trying to keep it low key. I really super stay focused on the music, so my path been a little bit just more, like, quiet, because I'm really just all about the songs and perfecting right. my craft with that. I ain't really into a lot of the drama shit. I stay up to myself. I don't hang out with a lot of rappers either, so I don't got like a crew of rappers around me and nothing like that. So I just be kind of like doing my own thing. But I fuck with a lot of niggas in Chicago though. First and foremost, man, you know, go on tell the people what's your name, where you from, and all that. Oh yeah, we get into that. Yo, my name Rocky Fresh. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. 29 years old, been rapping for like damn near like 11 years now. So shit been smooth. What part of Chicago you from? I, mean, I done live all around Chicago. Like I used to live like in the Roseland area when I was a shorty. I went to this school called Salem Christian Academy. And then my parents moved me to Homewood. So I went to Homewood Flossmore High School. Then after that, I moved to the West Side. I lived on Western Florinoy. Um, when I, I, at that time, not to cut into too early, but like I linked up with Rick Ross when I was living over there. Then did a deal with him. And then I moved to Pilsen. And since probably the last six, seven years, I've been living in downtown Chicago. So that's where I live now. It's a song you got called Lifelong, man, that I listen to, bro. I really uh, said yeah. I listen to this song. I listen to it about five times. You know? uh, a young nigga, I'm just trying to live my life long. You know that's lit, bro. I appreciate that. For real. Yeah, because I'm the type of person I like to, you know, fully grasp the concept of the song. And then you got you got Nip on there, you got Ross yeah. on there. So it's like, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's so, your legend. Like, it's deep, it, it's deep, man. It's a deep song, you know what I'm saying? And it go crazy and shit. Like, how was that? How did all that come about? Like, how did you get involved with Rick Ross and all of that? Cause like you said, you got you got involved with Rick Ross at a young age, huh? Yeah, I, was, I just had turned 21 when me and Ross linked. It was, that was in 2012. And like, basically to be real with you, like I had a real strong underground buzz going on. It was like supernatural, like, because I had a lot of friends that lived in the inner city of Chicago, but then I was going to high school in the suburbs. And like, I was, you know, I was a goofy kid, but I also wasn't like too goofy and shit. So when I started to make music, you know, a lot of my homies and people that knew me was like real intrigued by that. I, I was always into like collecting sneakers and a little bit of fashion and shit like that. So people, you know, they knew me as like having the shoes, doing shit like that. So when I started doing music, I had a decent little wave of people that just already was interested into what I was gonna talk about. So then when I did my first show, it was at Reggie's Rock Club. This was like in 2009 and it was my first show. I ended up selling it out. And it was just a mixture of like the South suburbs, like the Wicker Park area. Cause I started hanging out down there and then kids that I knew from the South side. And it was like no fights, no violence. And so with that, me and my manager, we started getting plugs on a lot of the venues in Chicago because we was able to prove that we could do numbers and also that we was going to bring a safe crowd to the venues. So when I started doing my shows, I had Chance the Rapper, Big Mensa, King Louie. Like I was adding them all to my bills and that's how I got cool with a lot of them. And then, then from that, I shot this music video for like my third mixtape. It's called Driving 88 and it had a DeLorean in it from Back to the Future. So I was driving in DeLorean around Chicago. I had the Back to the Future shoes. Shit. I tell my niggas, anything is possible. Impossible is nothing. And a lot of the blogs start picking that shit up. All of a sudden, Ross saw it, Diddy saw it, and like all of the majors saw it. So I, I got in this bidding war. But I was like super nervous, bro, because I didn't know how to really, you know, I never expected that level of attention. So I was super yeah. quiet about it. But during that time, I was meeting with Ross personally. He fly me out, Diddy fly me out, all these labels fly me out. And then with Ross, it was just like, he knew, you know, how serious, like, the shit was getting for me. 
And um, just the situation that he gave me, like he gave me a deal based off of where he saw I was going and not necessarily where I was at at that time. So that's how me and him got in tune with each other. You have a lot of artists that sign with these labels and then you never hear from them again, so to speak. Yeah, 100%. You know what I'm saying? So the ones that's putting in the work, those are the ones that you see, you know? Yeah, hell yeah, 100%. You know, like, just being on the other side of that, what advice would you have to give to, you know, unsigned artists just dealing with the whole situation, like the, the pros and the cons, some of the pros and some of the cons? Definitely, definitely. I mean, it's like, to be real, you know, I don't, I don't care myself like a know-it-all, but I definitely can give like some factual, you know what I'm saying, a factual answer to that question because I've been on both sides of the game in the sense that like I'm still a young nigga, so Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, that shit is very important to me. But also when I signed my deal, Apple Music and Spotify wasn't even a thing. So we was doing that piff, you know what I'm saying, and uh, SoundCloud and shit like that. We ain't even had a, the ability to monetize like some of my biggest projects, I wasn't able to technically monetize off the exact songs and the downloads and all of that. So with that being said, the biggest thing that I learned was one, having your core fan base strong and people that appreciate you for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, of course I got a lot of fans when I started fucking with Ross and with Meek and all of them and doing songs with them. But the fans that got me to meet them was people that just appreciated me for me. Songs that I was on by myself, shit that I was doing, videos that I was in by myself. I feel like a lot of artists, I mean, now they be waiting for that cosign. And it's like, sometimes you can put yourself in that position and get what you're looking for when you utilize your own network and the, the niggas you went to school with, the people that you work with, your mama friends, all of them, like them people still listen to music. They still count as real fans. So I just started there. And then I think too, one major thing is having a, a strong team, you know? And like, I explained it to a lot of like my young homies, like it's like sports, you know what I'm saying? Like you may have a dude that's super dope at high school basketball, a nigga average of 30, but then he get into college, he don't necessarily fit the system. You know what I'm saying? And you got a nigga that's super good in college, he get to the league, may not necessarily fit the system. So with that being said, it's like, unfortunately it's a business. And sometimes the homies that we come up with, they don't necessarily show the growth and the maturity that it takes to be um, efficient and like such a crazy business. And so your team gonna be forever evolving you're gonna have certain people that is always gonna stick with you from day one. And you just gotta learn how to decipher that. Cause I feel like a lot of artists, we take a lot of shit too personal and forget like it's a business. And the people that surround you, they help keep that business afloat. So I would say one, get a good team. And then two, like build the fan base grassroots. Cause when these artists stop fucking with you, it when, you know what I'm saying? You get a new deal, you're gonna be able to take your core fans with you. What would make me the ideal teammate? You see what I'm saying? Definitely. Um, I think, man, that's a fucking good ass question. Like, um, I think one major thing is like, you know, ideas, you know what I'm saying? Like one thing with, when it comes to, especially like being a sign artist, it's like, I have access to, you know what I'm saying? Certain plugs within the label, whether it's marketing budgets, different things like that. But before we got that, you know what I'm saying? There had to be creative ideas that we reach fans without utilizing the most money or being able to not necessarily afford certain things. So you gotta have one person that is an extreme idea person, not that's just throwing shit out, you know what I'm saying? But somebody that you could trust that makes sound ideas based off of research. Like I tell a lot of my homies, I got homies, they done went to college for certain shit. And then they think like when they get into the music world that that same stuff applies. And this whole setup is a totally different thing. So it's like, you gotta have a homie that really studied. Like, even with me finding out about your platform, it's like, I really be into this shit. Like, I love my city. I love dope content coming out the city. So it's like, I be needing a nigga to put me on shit like you before I find out myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and it's yeah. that type of, you know what I'm saying? That type of mindset. And then that grows. So that way, when you start getting them budgets, you telling the labels what to do because they already trust the way that you marketed yourself. You know what I'm saying? Getting to that point. And uh, I think it's the same thing, you know, with, with all the little details, merchandise, you know, that's a huge thing for, for anybody that's building a following, you know, so you want to have a person that's focused on that. Obviously, like the deeper you get when you're a rapper, you need a booking agent, you know what I'm saying? You need somebody that's going to go get you them shows and shit. Um, public, it's like, it's a lot of moving parts, you know, and every year I was gaining fans, I seen new pieces that I had to add to my team. Yeah, I'm off on that.
Yeah, but you know, every year, every year we was gaining fans, we had to add new pieces. So that's why I was saying earlier, like it's forever changing. You know what I'm saying? One day you're gonna start off with just you and your manager, you and your homie. And eventually that workload gonna get bigger to where you're gonna have to add different people that focus on different things. Now you need a photographer. It's just a lot of shit, you know? And I don't think people realize that when they get into it, but when you start to piece all of them things together, you should take that as a sign that you're heading in the right direction. When it comes to an artist um, getting himself exposure for, you know, a decent decent budget, what mm-hmm. do you recommend? Like, you know, what, what angles do you recommend an artist, you know, s- to take? I mean, are things like um, campaigns on Instagram good? You know, sponsors on YouTube, are those type of things good for an artist to do? Or is an artist just wasting his money when he do that? You see what I'm saying? No, nah, definitely. I mean, I think um, that's that's a super good question too, because I went through both trials and errors. I didn't invest in that shit. That completely didn't pan out. And then there was other things that one of my homies that is an artist may have invested in some shit that worked for him and I was too scared to pull the trigger on it, you know? So it's a very, um, it's a gamble every time when it comes to promotion, you know what I'm saying? The higher up you get, it's the same way. But I also think with us being from Chicago, right, it's, it's a very distinct ways of, it's two different ways you can go about it. Like we've seen, you know, uh, artists like Keith and, and Dirk and Herb just have such these polarizing lifestyles and these polar, polarizing hood stories that just have captured the whole world. And they ain't really had to, you know what I'm saying? Like they, they just showcase who they really were. Then you got a person like me where it's like, I'm not necessarily speaking from that perspective. So I had to invest in a $5,000 video at the time when I was just getting started to make my dreams come to life and showcase what I want to showcase. And then, you know, get a publicist that I was paying 1500 a month that, you know what I'm saying, ended up putting my, my shit on the right website. So it's, it's tough because it just depends on what type of music you make. Like right now, YouTube is like, man, if you if you are an artist that's, that's speaking on a perspective from the streets, you got a very good, you know what I'm saying, ability to just step outside, you know what I'm saying, and, and shoot your day-to-day life. And people really falling in line with that shit. They really want to see what that looks like. But if you're an artist that's taking a different route, it's just a lot more of a, uh, a political game when it comes to that shit. So you might have to invest in IG promotion and really make sure that you go on YouTube and figure out exactly how to promote your songs to hit the area that you want them to hit. I honestly haven't necessarily done that. And the reason why is because by the time I got my deal, like once again, a lot of the things that work on Instagram now, they didn't even exist. Like we couldn't promote posts back then. We couldn't do a lot of shit. So I, I'm super grateful that like the fan base that people see for me is just niggas that I naturally built up just off of the music. but. There's so many other cheat codes now that it's like, I, I be um, I support artists that know how to take advantage of that shit. It's kind of like the card cracking there, you know what I'm saying? Certain niggas, they just don't know how to fucking, I can't, you know what I'm saying? Grasp that mindset, but for the hustlers that figured that shit out, you know, on that new wave shit, it's, it's very similar to that. So it's a lot of ways to get that promo out here and it's, it's new ways I'm still learning too. Yeah, yeah, cause I noticed I, I did things like, um, cause you know, I. I did music actually for 